Hi guys, welcome to this session in LibreOffice Calc. In this module, I want to show you some of the more common basic features all in one video so that you can get yourself going with LibreOffice Calc. So first of all, I've clicked into cell B2. I'm just going to type MON short for Monday. When I click away from that, what I can do is just get this little black cross in the corner and fill that over to Friday in this example where I've got the days of the week. That's called a custom list and it's already pre-populated. You don't need to do anything about that. Just type total at the end there. Come back over the other side a little bit. And then we'll just do some categories. So car, tax, gas, bills, etc. So if I type in some figures, type 10 for the first one, get a little black cross and pull it over. You can see their increments like that. Now I want to do it um, 10 and then 15. I want a step value, what's called a step value. So I tell the computer what the gap is, highlight the two items, and then when I pull it across, it does that step, whatever I suggested or selected, should I say. Let's just do that one again. One, seven. So I've got a step of six. Pull that over like so. And then just for bills, we'll have 10. And I'll pull that one over so it's like the first one. Now all of this I want to be formatted into pounds. So up on the ribbon that I've got activated there, you've got an icon that sets it to currency. And you could have gone into it through there as well, whichever way you want to do. But now it's all in pounds. Now to add these up, basically I'm just going to use the sum function. Now the sum function is part of the functions that you get with all of the other ones there's some there's average there's min there's max there's count there's count a those are the functions i just want to do in this um, little example so if i put some labels so we can see how that works so i'll do total average max tap that again average max min count and count A. It's just there's a difference between those two. Now I'm, I am just going to colour this block a different colour to everything else. Not that colour though. I'll go for that colour. I'm liking that. Now if you want you can put borders on all of this so I will just highlight this area and put all borders so I can make it stand out a little bit like that. I probably should have picked up the, this as well so I'll go for that. all of that all borders so everything's blocked off now to work out the the total for each of these days i should use the sum function now i could go equals sum open the bracket highlight the list and click the tick and it will work it out for me if i just delete that for a second i could use the key command which is alt equals which then grabs that list which is correct i click the tick all of those are okay I could go to the function options, click on sum, and it will pick up that list again. And again, it's correct, and I can tick that. So each one of those is a valid way of doing it. You can also equal sum, open the bracket, and type it yourself if you know what the function name is. But this time, obviously, I, I need to highlight it, and I still get the same answer. Now, I suppose if you use the, the key command, alt equals, having highlighted it first obviously that is probably the quickest way of doing it because it's just going to assume you want to add up each column and add up each row which is what it's just done there but for the others let's do the others I'm going to type the others because I think it's good practice to type functions because that's when you make mistakes on hopefully not so that's the average function you highlight the list same list you click the tick it tells you what the average is the max is the same equals max open the bracket highlight the list check it at the top click the tick and then the min equals min now I could like I've already shown you gone and gone through the wizard to got the to get these but I will tend to type the ones that I know now the count and count a function need to just distinguish the difference between these two so if I just go count first count first basically it just counts numbers it doesn't count text so that'll work but if I put in a letter in there or a uh, not a letter a word so I put word 
that's not counting that item it's just counting the three numbers that it can see now if I put count a down there count a highlight the same list that will count everything so that's picking that up it's picking that word up four I'll put this back to how it was one so it's still saying four even though it's all numbers so I think the count a is a more flexible function don't know why that's not used more commonly but that's how I wanted to show it so now if I highlight these functions and just pull those across all the way across to the end all of these functions are now looking at these figures in the orange area if I take if I change any of these figures I'll change it to 200 these are going to recalculate not everything will change because obviously the minimum didn't change and the counts didn't change but the total did the average did and the max did because I've just typed there and that's that's basically how you should set things up now if you want to do a chart on thing on things like this if I just um, you can highlight the categories and in this case you probably would just want the totals not the whole not the whole thing but it's totally up to you the chart is on the insert insert chart and it's picked that up it's already given you the the chart which is big because I've got my screen big this is just a wizard where you can go through it and check different options change the range if you want select whether the labels are in rows or columns add date extra series and then give it a title so so on and so on but I'm just going to finish this and click off it for a second just make my screen a little bit smaller and then make this chart quite a little bit smaller so just click on the edge of that and just move it down a little bit I don't need that title so I'll click on that double click first then click on that and you can delete it now if you want the labels on this if you right click you can insert data labels and then it will put the label on each of these and you can see how that works so that's how you can create a chart based on this and again it's looking at these figures so if I change these figures if I put that back down to 20 the chart will react to whatever change I make in that orange area so that's just a basic look at some simple functions and how to get a little chart on there to display the answers now if I go into another sheet uh, I've gone to sheet two if you want to pull information from say sheet two from sheet one and let me just um, let me just name this so I don't want that there get, get down if I double click on sheet one I can name that so I'll call that main okay and then if I double click on sheet two I can call that um, what can I call that main test I'll call it test because I can't think what to call it for this little example so you can just simply type equals from this test sheet and click onto the main sheet and click anywhere you want so I'll click into that total sheet there so it says main at the top but it brings that figure through if I just color that up a minute 295 if I go back into this one and put that 200 pound back in there 475 475 I said 9575 475 there it just picks it up it's just linked to that cell and it will always reflect whatever's in that cell now if you want to do um, a, a chart which has got total percentages in you can do this so if I just type some more categories so car tax gas bills again and just put some random figures in so just one two three two 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 three 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 four 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 oops too many fours alt equals at the bottom click the tick I get myself a total I'm not going to bother formatting it but this time if I highlight um, th that in fact I'll call that total so it's gonna sit there like that so if I highlight that let's have a look what we can do in the chart insert chart um, I'm just going to finish this off I want to add the labels so let's see what we can do with the labels add data labels now obviously that's just the numbers if you right click on the numbers you can format data labels format data labels and then you can change the value to percent percentage so if I click OK to that let's have a look what that looks like so it's just coming 100% because it's saying it's it's a percentage of the total
So really to show percentages, it doesn't really work with a column chart, so I need to get rid of this or change this chart. So I'll just go back into the chart option and pick the pie chart, that one, and click OK. And then you can see it flicking around like that. But because I've got the, the total in here, that's not working because that's showing half of this. So if I just make this a little bit smaller, now if I double click on that, it should highlight where it's looking at. You can see it's picking up the, the, the chart there. So if I reset this, go into the wizard again, um, not that one, chart ranges. It's coming down to C6. Well, I only want that to come down to C5. So then that should make the pie chart look a little bit better. And now you can see how the percentages work. So it didn't really work on the column chart because obviously everything would be 100% of itself. But now it's seeing that as a pie. And you can see how that works. So that's a, a simple pie chart. And I'll just get rid of that. Click on there, just delete. The last thing I want to do is look at a validation list. So let's say I want this list to be available on a drop down for whatever reason. So I'm going to click into that cell and color it up. I want to put it in there. Validation is on the data tab. And it's on the right there, you've got validity, you click into that. And then it says by default, any values, all values. So you want um, cell range, and then you just select the cell range. And then you click that back, click OK, and then that list that you've selected should be in, the, in there. The idea is you select an item, and it's OK. Now, if you go back into it, you can, you can give it a input message show input title select item maybe um, select from the list and then if you don't select from the list you can come up with action show so stop title wrong get a grip only these items I said OK to that. So there's the input message. So you're selecting from the list. Type something that's not in the list. And it comes up with the error message that you've stipulated. So get a grip on these items I said. Or whatever. Something nicer than that. You click OK to that. And then that's your little validation list. And if you want to delete what's in there. And then pull that down so it covers multiple cells. There's lots of different options in terms of valid, uh, validation lists. So that's all I want to talk about in this little video. So hopefully it's been used a bit fast and furious, but an overview of some of the more basic, easy to use features in Calc. So thank you for your time. I'll catch you on the next one.